Hello and welcome back to a new a new rapid application node for Indus of Web Studio and Viva Edge. Uh, um, on this video, we will cover how you can connect an IoT view runtime uh, with an external database server. It might be any uh, database uh, provider and, or any database server. On this case, we, we will use SQL, Microsoft SQL Server because we believe that it's easier uh, for demonstrative purposes. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, I will create a new project now. I will call it IoT Q for DB. It should use a, an embedded product type. I will, I will use embedded slides, so that should work. Uh, the resolution, well, uh, something small, probably for my project. My project screens, uh, security system, I want to use it. So let's just do it uh, next, next, and finish. Uh, the next step is configure the database connection. So I will configure the database connection here. Options, default database. And for the primary database, click here on the wizard. If the wizard is open, a Microsoft only DB provider for SQL Server is the provider that I will use for Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, I will need to put here the IP address for my SQL Server. Uh, on this case, my SQL Server is running over a virtual machine. And this virtual machine, let's see what its IP address is. So IP config. Okay, we have its IP address. In fact, I are, I'm already connected to it, uh, to the database net, uh, and it has no tables inside. So let's put the IP address on the Indusoft and the VBatch project. Here, the password and the username, username, password, and a low saving password. Let's select the database server, the database instance on this database server, which is DB on my case. As you can see here, uh, let's test the connection. The connection was succeed. Click on OK, click on OK again. Click on OK one more time. And uh, for demonstrative purposes, I will create a simulation. Um, so uh, let's create a simulation tag T1 that one integer it will receive the changes of second tag second tag is an a system tag and this will be executed always so every time the second changes this value will be transferred to t1 and this is because i cannot configure system tags on a trend logger so the next step is create a trend logger and configure t1 there and i will configure it to use the database uh, history format here in the database configuration, I need to disable this use default. And this, I can disable this one also, but I will leave the default name, trend001. So after doing that, if I save the changes and start from the runtime, uh, what I will have probably, it's a new table created here by my development environment. And yes, we have a table. So we can select and we have the values of T1 changing here. And that's from my development environment and it's working on the development environment. And that's good, that's great because that's the first step. So if you have it working on the development environment, the next step is transfer the project into the IoT build runtime. So I will connect to my IoT view station. Let me plug in my Raspberry Pi. Okay, plug it in and let's wait for it to, bow, to boot. And meanwhile, I will check if the connection can be done to it. Connecting to my Raspberry Pi. Okay, my password. 
And okay, we have the Raspberry Pi here available now. Uh, and for demonstrative purposes, I want to install, I install IoT View here. It's already installed as I will cover in a new video in the future how you can install IoT View on a Raspberry Pi. That's a very, very simple process, but for now it's already running there. So I just need to connect the remote agent, remote management, sorry, to it because the remote agent should be running on the Raspberry Pi already. So let's put the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. Let's connect. Connect it to IoT View version 20. Let's download the project. Oh, let's stop the project first because it's running. So project stop requested, then stopped. Let's download the project. Might take a couple seconds to prepare the files. It's sending the files, the project files into the device. And that's it. So if we let's do something first. Uh, let's delete the table here that my ID created. So let's refresh, no tables. The IoT view runtime should be able to create a table now. So let's start, break, start it. And if we check here, uh, we don't have the table. And that's expected and I, I wanted to, this to happen because for IoT view to make it work, we need to do a couple more uh, configurations over the uh, over the whole system. This is because uh, when you connect a standalone uh, full runtime and embedded view compact embedded uh, runtime into uh, data, with a database, what we used to uh, do the connection is this guy here, this piece of software, which is the Studio Database Gateway. So Indosoft connects, uh, VivEdge connects to it, and this connects to the database server. And this tool, this this software only runs over Windows. It's not compatible with IoT View. So if we go to the IoT View runtime here, we go to uh, bar, we go to log and check the uh, remote agent log. We open it and check. At the end, it will say, okay, we failed to connect to Studio Database Gateway on the local host and on this port. Check if the remote agent is, is running, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Because it's trying to reach the Studio Database Gateway running in the Raspberry Pi. And that's not possible because the Studio Database Gateway is not compatible with Linux at all for now now but uh, what we can do now is um, configure the uh, studio database gateway to run on the database server so that's what we will do now so i have the database server here on the, the virtual machine what i will do now it's move my studio database gateway installation package which is here in this folder you can see here inside the program files for, for Intersoft or Aviva Edge, Redist, Database Gateway. And inside we have this uh, installation package. So I will copy it. I will paste it into my virtual machine and I will install it. Sometimes it will install some prerequisites at the beginning. Otherwise it will start with this uh, installation screen. Just click next, click on next something for the company name next 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 install and after the installation is done you will be good to go so here on the files explorer inside the c drive inside the program files you will have the studio database gateway 2020 folder and inside you will have the studio database gateway so you only need to start it and you will notice that here we have the Studio Database Gateway running and listening in the port 3997. So let me enable the log for it, show the, all the messages, date and time, etc. So uh, we have the Studio Database Gateway running on the database server now. And that's what we need to make IoT View connect to the database server.
So what we need to do now, it's in the configuration for this trend worksheet, we need to change in the advanced settings for the database configuration here, the advanced button. We need to change this IP address because this is pointing to the local uh, Studio Database Gateway. We need to point to the IP address of the PC where the Studio Database Gateway will be running. On our case, it's the database server. So let's put the database server IP address. After that, we can click on OK, click on OK again, and we can check if after running locally on the development PC, we can get a table created on the database server. The table is there. And of course, the log saying that the, the where is this? No, it's still. Let me see. Database configuration, this IP address, it's, I believe. Oh yeah, I need to configure also the default database here. So the change should be done for everything. Uh, 77. Okay. And let's kill the studio to get away here to avoid any problem on my dev PC. Okay, it's not running. Let's delete this table. Okay, and let's start over. Save the changes. We have the table now. Yes, the table is there, and if we go to the Studio Database Gateway on the uh, server, we can see that the comments are, uh, in fact, being executed by this guy instead of the local Studio Database Gateway, because what I configured in the project is to use uh, this Database Gateway, Studio Database Gateway, instead of the local one. So we are good to go now. Uh, the next step for me is to stop the runtime here, Delete the table again, so we can be sure that everything is working in the tables. And let's uh, clear here on the database. Let's clear the log. Let's download the project into the Raspberry Pi. So let's open the remote management project running now. Stop it. Download the project. Preparing the files. Okay, break what's sent, and we can start the runtime. So if we go to the Raspberry Pi log, we should see at the end that we no longer have this error messages that we had in the past, pointing to the IP local IP address. We have now uh, standard uh, information messages. So if we go to the management studio, we can see here that the table was created and it was created by the IoT view runtime. So if we go to the database server, we can see that the, the connection was established to it through, uh, by the IoT view runtime. Uh, we can even include the screen with a grid object to show the data from the database. Data source will be the database, data source settings as default. No, let's use what I configure here. Okay, that's fine. And the table name will be trend one, of course. Columns, this will be date, time, and the field on the database server is time stamp and T1, T1 is the other column name. This is date time UTC and this is numeric. So let's okay. Uh, let's save the changes. Let's call it main. No, I don't want to download yet. 
let's publish this to HTML. No, I don't want to send it yet. Yeah, I want to enable the TCP IP server. Okay, that's fine. Let's check on the mobile access settings. If we have the enabled GD CGI option enabled, uh, it should be turned on to make it work on IoT view. That's important. So it's important. It's enabled and we can now stop the runtime and download the changes. So after that, we can click on run and the project and the IoT view runtime will start. So let's open the mobile access client here. Let's go to the mobile access screen. As, as you can as you can see here, we have the information stored uh, that is stored in the database server here on my virtual machine running Windows. And uh, all the operations are being uh, managed by the Studio Database Gateway running on the database server. And it, it is the gateway between the IoT runtime and the database server running here locally. So uh, I believe that's it for now. Uh, this, uh, I hope this demonstrative video is useful for you. If you have any question or any comment, please leave that in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any technical issue, any technical question, something different that you might want to know, contact uh, Aviva Support and get help from a specialist on this product. Thank you for watching the video.